Okay, so I should have known better. I should have known that if there was still 30 minutes left <laughs> of this, that he wasn't going to be done. So let's jump in and see what he has to say. He just doesn't know when to be quiet. It's so, now you call them famous people trying to use their platform? I didn't call anybody. That's probably what scares you the most. I didn't call anybody. Didn't reach out to anybody. They find me. Sorry, that's, that's the facts. It's evil. Now listen, I, I was gonna do like a two minute deal and just be like, eh, 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 and just be done. No, Lord said, no, just go ahead and just, just deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. The Lord said, that's, that's okay. That's what we're going to go with. The Lord said, you were just going to do two minutes. Oh, buddy. Okay. Deal with it. Deal with it. I, I know it's 1240. I, I hope they're just hungry, but I don't care. We know. We know you don't oh, care. You don't care about the we sheep. We got plenty of storage. We know. For a whole bunch of chairs. What? You have storage for a whole bunch of chairs? What does that even mean? You have to store your chairs because you don't have enough people filling them? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm so confused. Top reach to the middle section. What? I, I don't care. We know. I'm over it. I spent far too many years in the ministry being a tap dancing monkey. What? I'm over it. So I'm just saying, there are some things that if people don't get discernment about, they will be robbed of the riches of the gifts of the Holy Ghost that he's placed within them. You are correct. Always telling on yourself. We went a long way around the barn this morning. Didn't get far in the text, but I'm just saying, God will send you a man to lead you in what you oughtest to do. And if he's the right man, he'll teach it, and you'll be able to do it. But if he's not the right man, find the right man. Find the right man. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't, I wouldn't care in the least bit in April if that crowd that left and gathered up other disgruntled people wanted to start a church and let... You obviously do care. You're so spun up over something that's not even happening. It's like a family reunion. It's like come together and let's worship and pray. I mean, the amount of actual deliverance that's going to have to take place to get rid of what you guys have imparted on people, that might take up the whole time. Greg, be the pastor. If it were done right. You wouldn't know how to set up a church correctly if you opened up a Bible and read it. Because you're not living it. That's the real fact of the matter. And just go look at the Unlocked page. You can see everybody's saying it. Everybody knows. You see, how you leave one place is how you enter the next. If you leave in rebellion, you start in rebellion. I didn't leave in rebellion. I left because you sent, well, you had your wife send an email and I responded back to the email because it was all manner of ridiculous accusations that weren't true. And I asked if you would be willing to meet face to face and you responded back with no, not interested. And I knew that's how you would respond. Of course, that's how I would respond. That's what adults do. And just take away the fact like, Yes, that's what adults do, but that's what Christians should do. It should be Matthew 18. That's what we should have done. And you told me in the email, be quiet or I won't be, which I didn't even know what that meant because what would you say? Well, three days later, I found out you're willing to lie. You're willing to risk a felony 
to file a false police report and accuse me of sex trafficking children to try to scare me into being quiet because you're scared of what I might say. So I didn't leave in rebellion. I left biblically. I left wanting to have a conversation and you wouldn't do it because you're a coward. Because again, like I hate to say this because I do love you and care about you, but you're a coward. You would never say any of this to my face. You just wouldn't. And I don't even think you'll say it in court because the counter sue would destroy you. And like, bro, I don't want to do that. If I walk out that double door with a bitter heart, when I open my house door, I still got a bitter heart. So when you go out bitter, you go in bitter. That's all there is to that. It's just the facts. I'm not bitter. It's just the facts. At all. So, all that to say, as Paul said in the words of the New Testament, the Lord rewards you according to your deeds. Oh, I know. He does. Isn't that so good? It's so good. He, that is true. You're right. You're right. And, and man, the blessing the blessings that we've had in the last seven, eight months. I mean, it's all over the unlocked page. Are you ignoring that part though? Whatever that looks like. The Lord reward you according to your deeds. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna pronounce nothing. They've already pronounced damnation upon themselves. No, we haven't. So. Everybody in that little group, which after a while, those people start eating each other. They've already had to call the police and a couple of them. It's, it's crazy. We've already called the police? Yeah. We did because you had someone come into your church who was unsaved and mentally unstable. And she went there for two years. And you even put her in leadership position. And nowhere in the time that she was under your shepherding did you acknowledge the fact or see the fact or deal with the fact that she needed mental help. And then you kicked her out and then you blasted her from the pulpit. And I, whether it was a fault or not, tried to help and I couldn't. And I realized she was more than I could handle and she was threatening us and yeah I called the police on her but guess what there wasn't anything I could do the police were like yeah we'll do a welfare check on her but she hasn't done anything to specify a threat so what you think you're seeing in unlocked I guarantee you there's no judge that's going to take that just Speaking from experience, but again, you're welcome to try because our counter suit would, I've already talked about it. It's fine. So here, here's the deal. Send any reporter, send any outlet, what? any investigator, private or otherwise. What? Did you know they've been calling? They have been calling. This right straight from Madison. God bless you for at least being honest and letting us know. They've been calling every government organization they can to get me arrested for January 6th. What? That is not true. <laughs> I've never called any government organization at all. I haven't called other than to call the Mount Juliet Police Department to get a copy of the police report that you filed against us, Greg. And when I called the Mount Juliet Police Department, to see what I, what, like, could you at the very least do a welfare check on Jackie Thames or Thames or whatever her name is? That's the only government agency I've ever called. I haven't called anybody. And nobody that's an admin has called anybody. I haven't. They haven't. Now, does that mean people haven't reached out to us? No, I've already said people have reached out to us. I haven't reached out to anybody. And if Madison is saying that, She's not telling the truth, but of the people that I've talked to that, you know, like between you, Greg and Madison, 
you're the only one that I have proof of lying. So I don't think that's what Madison said. I don't know why she would say that. It's not even true. It's not true. It, it's not true. What Madison does, that's on her. Not on me. It's not true. Which they were for when they came to the church. And I'm still like, for it. Interviewed by the FBI, it didn't get much higher than that because the FBI agents were the ones that was instigating the right anyhow, a bunch of fakers. Listen, the thing with the FBI, and I have to be very careful what I say here. The thing with the FBI, um. Mm. Okay, I'll just say this. There were people that did dumb stuff on January 6th. They got swept up in the mob mentality. They got swept up in the crowd. And they allowed themselves to do things that they shouldn't have done. There were people that I knew that were there. And I told them, you being there and what you say you did, it's not a good look. You shouldn't have done it. I'm not... It, like I've already said, politically, I agree with Greg. Like politically, Greg, I agree with you. I think January 6th was a setup. I've already said, if the FBI is coming after Greg for January 6th, like that's just going to bolster everybody's support for Greg. Because like we already know what went down, right? So... I don't think anybody needs to be worried about January 6th. You see, I ain't got nothing to lose with these people. They don't scare me. I don't, I don't walk around like this. This is how we're supposed to walk in the kingdom. Hey. We don't scare you, but you've just spent 40 minutes talking about us. Your actions and your words don't match there, buddy. And I have the arrest for January 6th. Whatever. And how could any of us have you arrested for January 6th? I wasn't there. And I don't have any authority. Like, whatever. You give me too much credit. I got enough preachers around here that keep things going fine no matter how long they put me in there with food rations and water. Arrest me for January 6th. Now they hate Joseph Z. Talking all kind of smack about Joseph Z. Um, first of all, nobody's like, listen, all I've said about Josie, he's not for me. That's all I've said. And his little diatribe that he did, I just used his own words. So, you know, I just used his own words. You better be careful about that. He, he is a prophet of God. I don't. Bro. Anyway. To be one, but I guarantee you he is a prophet of God. Talking trash about Joseph Z. Oh, look at them offerings he's taken. Well, you know what's interesting about that? When he did one like that at our church, Jen was the first one to stand up and say she was going to give $100,000. She did that publicly, Ananias and Sapphira, and never gave us a dime of any of it. Greg Locke. Gregory Dwayne Locke never gave you a dime of any of it? Is that really the position you want to take? I'm going to give you an opportunity to backpedal that. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You, listen, you want to show some grace to me? I'm going to show you some grace. <laughs> I'm going to give you until the end of February to retract that statement and tell the whole truth. You better tell the truth. And first, like, what kind of a pastor gets up and talks about what somebody in their church gives or doesn't give? Listen, I've already talked about that. I've already given the testimony on that and how God used it. Here's the interesting thing, Greg. If you had a problem with how that all went down, why didn't you come and talk to me about it? Why didn't you come and talk to Matt about it? Have a conversation with us about it? But listen, didn't give a dime. You know that's not true. You know that's not true. Let's really, like, you're a liar. You're a straight up liar. 
and you need to correct it. I am not Ananias and Sapphira, and you that is now the second or third time you've tried to speak that curse over me. I reject it, but now it's on you. So you better fix it. And want to say Joseph, see, he's a false prophet. Did God all over DR? Yeah, I did. I don't know anybody have anything against DR. I do. He's as docile as a koala bear until he's preaching, then he's a wild man. See, get this, get this. Our very own John Groves, he's in Orlando, starting his own church. She done called down there and got people out of his church. I did what? Called down where to who? Got people out of his church? What are you talking about? I don't... First of all, no, I didn't. You're crazy. I don't even know John Groves. The only thing I know about John Groves is the... I have to be so careful what I say. Listen, I don't know John Groves. I've never had a conversation with him. I've never said a word to him. I know people that know him. And I also, oh, listen, he had a slightly inappropriate interaction on social media with my daughter that I thought was, I let it go because I think he was, I hope he was trying to be nice, but it was still inappropriate. And I let it go. I don't have anything, I, I don't know John. I know people that know John and I've heard some stories and I find it very interesting that the man can't land anywhere. And now he's trying to start another church in Orlando. I find it amazing. I didn't call down and talk to anybody that goes to his church. It's just not true. Now, did somebody from his church reach out to me? Yeah, they did. But I'm already telling you, I haven't reached out to anybody. They come find me. They come find me. Don't got them stirred up. I didn't stir anybody up. Oh, man, you better wear a life vest on this cruise, sister. I'm telling you that right now. Okay, so I already knew that he said this because somebody told me that he said wear a life vest on the cruise. Or what? Like, what? Wear a life vest on the cruise? Do you know on this cruise? Listen, I know you guys were cursing me because that's how you do because you guys are all up into witchcraft. Every curse you prayed against us, the Lord turned it into a bigger blessing. So, I don't know. Maybe I should say keep the curses coming because the Lord's blessing me up one side and down the other. You better slow your roll. Or what? You don't have one too many. One too many what? You got to the end of the month. I dare you to say something about an unlock. Okay, done. And I dare any of you in this room to stay on that page. Or what? Just, just stay on it. Oh, I'm going to. Thank you. Windbag. Let me tell you something. When it was time, Jesus exposed Judas. Yep. Yep. And I hate it. Dear Lord, I hate it. Having to take all that time to deal with it. But but you did I it. I think if I'm your guy, you'll understand why I did it. You're not my guy. Because what you ought to walk out here and be like is like, uh, liars and crooks and deceivers don't really talk like that. I have nothing to hide. They can all come. You haven't proven anything of what you've said. You've hurled a bunch of accusations with no proof and never once have you said any of it to my face, nor would you. And I can prove what you've said is not true. They can all interview me at one time, live. Put me live on The View. We'll have a time with Whoopi Goldberg. I guarantee you we will. What? What does that have to do with anything? Right? You just say, I don't have anything to hide. Yeah, you do. But where's all this opulence? 
Where's the mansion? Everybody thought I used to live in Dewey's house. Well, there we have something in common because people thought I lived in Dewey's house too. <laughs> the sodomite showed up here like two months ago with the little spandex on out in the middle of the road blocking traffic. We don't want to talk to Greg about. He came out, he said, this ain't record time. It's got his name on the side. He's like, that's because I like him. He's my pastor. Mm, you may want to call Dewey up. Double check that. We know he lives here. No, no, no. You can wear your spandex in Larry's yard because I live next door. I told him, I said, Brother God, I might as well take that sign down. I noticed that he did. I said, You take that sign down. I'm tired of people. What? And you're lucky Larry's so quiet. You're lucky Larry doesn't talk a lot. You told him to take that sign down. Are you for real? Listen, I don't need to speak out on Larry's behalf. He can handle himself, but you are a liar. And I live in that big old house. I'm glad he's got it, but I don't want it. I mean, wh where is all this nonsense these people talking about? Where's all this money at? Yeah. Where's all the money at, Greg? Where is it? You just like blah, 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 blah. You never put any proof. Open your books. Open your books. Put it out there for everybody to see. Prove us wrong. You never prove anybody wrong. You just run your mouth. My God, you run your mouth. Where's this Learjet at? Right? It's nowhere. But we got a bus that's got Ricky so sideways. I mean, we got to put money in that thing every time we go to Circle B in it. And I'm like, where's all this millions? Oh, I'll show you the bank statements and the check stubs and show you that it's in missionaries and single moms' pockets. Okay, then show it. Because last I heard, missionaries were calling up saying they hadn't been getting any money. Greg, prove it. You talk, 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 talk and you prove nothing. Prove it. It's in addiction ministries. It's planting churches. It's in pastor's pockets who pastor little churches that you'll never hear of that can't pay their own bill. That's where all the millions have gone. Prove it. Prove it. Because I got hundreds of people in a page on Facebook that say they've never seen the books. That's where all the millions have gone. Okay, prove me try wrong. To try to keep us from getting power. Try to keep you from getting power? What? Bro, you always tell on yourself. You can keep us wrapped up in lawsuits. Nobody's keep you wrapped up in lawsuits. You're literally trying to create another lawsuit by coming after me. I didn't go after you. I could have. I could have gone after you and sued you for that false police report, but I didn't. Guy, Lee, you're unbelievable. Threaten more lawsuits. Use anybody's platform. They you're the only me. one threatening lawsuits. You're the only one. The only one platform and I will sleep tonight like a bottle sucking baby. No, you won't. No, you won't. Because when you talk about basketball size ulcers, chewing your fingernails to the quick, losing sleep, you're talking about yourself because you always tell on yourself. Always. Always. Because the most dangerous man you will ever meet is a man that walks in the fear of the Lord and has nothing to hide. Or the most dangerous woman you'll ever meet is a woman who walks in the fear of the Lord 
has nothing to hide and has never been bought by you. You've got nothing on me, Greg. And that's what scares you. That's what scares you. Everybody knows my skeletons. No, they don't. And no, they don't. I've never heard your testimony. And when I ask other people about your testimony, nobody's ever heard your testimony from you. Ever. It's crazy to me. Like, anyway. Because I get to be the guy on the microphone. I know most of y'all. Unless you because I get to be with the guy with the microphone and I know most of y'all's. Yeah, we've already heard plenty of stories from people who have said, it's amazing to me. Like, I will say this to the remainder of the people at Greg's church. Be very careful because some of the people that have come out of it and have shared their stories with me have told me that Greg has said he enjoys the moments that he gets to counsel people because he then gets dirt on people and he uses it against them to keep them quiet. Now, that's what they've told me. I don't know. I've never sat with Greg and, and like had him try to get anything over on me. I'm really the open book. I always tell on myself. So if I have anything like it's out there, I don't have anything to hide. Like I legitimately don't have anything to hide because I always just tell on myself for anything that I'm doing. But the fact that your pastor would say right there that he's got dirt on all of you and he's making this face like he's not afraid to use it. That's your pastor. That's your pastor. I make you a promise. You ever leave the church for whatever reason because I'm not your guy? You won't ever see me talking bad about you on the internet. So do me a favor and share the look. I'm sorry. I left the church. And he's talking bad about me on the internet. He's just been calling me Ananias and Sapphira, telling everybody I'm a practicing witch. So listen, don't believe what he says. Believe what he does. He's a whole liar. When I'm found out to have been stealing money, sex trafficking children, wearing aprons at the Masonic Lodge at the end of Tate Lane, Bro, you know where the lodge is? Anyway. When I found all that out, then you can say anything you want to about me. Hmm. Do you know that like sex trafficking children, stealing money, and Masonic Lodge, like I've never, I don't care about any of that. First of all, I don't, I've never said you're stealing money. Misappropriating funds? Maybe I have questions. Prove me wrong. Stealing money, it's hard to steal what people give you. Now, are you misappropriating funds and spending money on things you're not supposed to or not being a good steward of the money? Yeah, I have questions about that. A lot of people do. So prove us wrong. Please, I'm begging you, prove us wrong. I've never said you're sex trafficking children. You said that about me. I've never said you're a Mason. People say it to me and I laugh at them. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, you know, like it'd be a really good in for the Masons, right? Like get everybody spun up and then pray curses on them. My beef with you is none of that. It's none of that. It's the fact that you won't sit down and have a conversation with anybody. It's the fact that you say you do things that you don't do. Like you're never going to badmouth anybody that leaves your church and you've just spent an hour badmouthing me. You say things about people that aren't true. You don't back up anything that you say. Your house is in total disarray. And listen, Greg, I've not said anything publicly about what's actually happening. I've not said it. I've not said it. You know what's interesting? What? Not one of those people has ever been able to leave our church and come up with any credible, valuable, viable Standable up in court evidence that our church has ever done anything wrong. Because nobody's gotten a hold of your books. Let me see your books. But you want stand up credible evidence that nobody's ever done anything wrong? You filed a false police report. That's a felony. That's a felony. Just FYI. 
FYI. And why do you have so many people that leave your church? I've never been to a church like this where so many people leave and they leave in such a way that you then have to blast them publicly. For, it's, it's not normal. Just everybody, so everybody's aware it's not normal. Not because we're perfect, but because we're striving to be righteous. And that just makes them mad. I'm not mad. I so, want you to prove me wrong. I'm not mad at all. Prove me wrong. And it's not even that I, it'd be right or wrong. I'm just asking questions. Answer my questions. Show me your books. Let me see your books. Prove it. If, if you don't have dirt on somebody, you got to dig up corpses so you can produce dirt. What? Careful, Greg. I do know where the bodies are buried. And it, you, you would be shocked at the level of invisceration that comes against this congregation just for you to be in here and meet right now. No. They, they threaten everything in the world. Not just them. I'm talking about fire marshals. Let me tell you something. Pastor Jesse. <laughs> if you knew <laughs> how much stress he took upon himself to take off my shoulders with all these inspections and Tennessee and calling every other day and double lawyers for four lawsuits. Well, you know, you, you might as well tell the head pastor there, Jesse, you might as well tell him that we're going to just come up here and we're going we're gonna, to, we, we just put a condemned sign around here and we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't think it's fit for worship. It's not that they don't think it's fit for worship. It's not fit for people to be in there. The building's not safe. You got it sitting up with a, like, do you think that the state fire marshal is just out to get you? Like everybody's out to get you and you don't do any wrong. There's over 700 complaints just from the last deliverance conference of noise and traffic where you're not being a good neighbor, Greg. Everybody else can't be wrong and you can't be the victim. At some point, all of these people can't be wrong about you said, make sure you relay the message that I will go live on Facebook. I will burn their condemned sign, turn the lights on, and we will have church the exact same way that we've always had church because we have violated nothing. We are in compliance. We are doing everything we can and then some to be good neighbors, even things we don't. This is not true. Like everybody needs to just take a beat and look at the actions. If you were in total compliance, you wouldn't have the pages and pages from the state fire marshal's office. Are they lying? You wouldn't have the pages and pages of complaints from the neighbors. Are they lying? You're not being a good neighbor, Greg. You make the volume louder than it's supposed to. I have seen it where Steve comes in and tells you guys to turn it down. And then you, Steve leaves and you turn it back up. I've, I've been in the tent. I've been in the tent where I've had to put earplugs in my ears because it's so loud. Why does it have to be that loud? Now, I don't know. It hasn't been since, since July that I've been in that tent and you've massively hemorrhaged people in that church, like massively. I don't think you have 200 in-person people, including kids at this point which is clearly why you're so spun up, but it doesn't have to be that loud. It really doesn't. And the tent and the thing you built around it and all did nothing for the noise. It didn't do anything for the noise. So suggesting that you're in compliance and you're trying to be a good neighbor, you're lying. You're lying. And all of the records prove that. I don't have to do anything. All of the records prove that. Have to do. You see, right then, when I was talking, I accidentally did like that, and I'm like, oh my goodness, tomorrow I'll be on CNN. You're not on CNN. And You're I'm kind like, of irrelevant. No matter what you do, people are going to hate you. 
I know we've changed and I know we've come out of the political arena so much. And I don't know what all that looks like for this year. It's going to get crazy. But listen, just like I told Eddie James the other night, man, when churches book me and then follow through with having me, I applaud them. You'd be shocked how many people ask cash. You'd be shocked how many people call back like, oh, I mean, we catch a lot of craziness. Churches catch all sorts of hell when they book me. That's a problem. The fact that you don't think that's a problem? Greg, where's the introspection? Where's the, where's the concept that everybody can't be wrong? And you're the only one that's right. I, I'm, I don't get it. They might have big, but the music in the background is a nice touch. Crowds, but they have big, mad, upset people. So look, let me tell you something. I am unbelievably humbled, blown away, supernaturally mesmerized. Honored beyond words of human understanding that everybody in this house and that normally comes to this house, everybody visiting and everybody online just decides to not listen to the chatter because the chatter doesn't matter, but they show up not for a man. Oh, there was a time I know a lot of people show, showed up for the man. We got past that. But now you just show up for Jesus. Greg, what in the last hour was Jesus? What, where did Jesus do any of that? You've done nothing but lie and slander and threaten the sheep. I know you well enough to know that this is probably wrapped up, so I'm going to turn it off here because I have more than heard enough. And I've addressed it, and yeah, at the end of the day, I'm not going to anybody with this. People are coming to me. I'm not seeking anybody out. I'm really not. And the people that are asking me to go public and listen, the requests, especially in the last two weeks, have been ridiculous. I'm not doing it. At least not right now. The Lord hasn't released me. But... Thank you for making it so clear and so plain why you're so nervous. It's really sad that you would rather spend all your time focusing on me and the Unlocked page and everybody that's part of that and no time before the Lord saying, God, what is it about me? That what am I doing to contribute to this? What have I done to mislead the sheep? What have I done that hasn't taken care of the sheep? Where have I fallen short? Where can I repent? Where can I apologize? How can I show love to these people that I've clearly hurt? You, Greg, you are the reason for all of it. For all of it. You, Greg. The responsibility rests with you. It's all on you.